Hi, my name is Brandon McNally and I'm a grad student at Rutgers University in the plant biology department with a focus on turf grass weed science. I'm interested in controlling annual bluegrass from non chemical control methods. As you can see from this experiment just behind me, it's in the second year and we're looking at how annual bluegrass is impacted by height of cut and irrigation practices in perennial ryegrass. One of the factors in this experiment is irrigation frequency. Plots are irrigated once or three times per week from June to October of each year. They are irrigated with 60% ET replacement and we take rainfall into consideration. We never apply more than 0.25 inches of water per hour. So sometimes it takes multiple applications to get this done. We typically try to apply between 8 a.m. and noon on the days that we're supposed to apply it. These plots are set up with the irrigation frames in the plots that get irrigated three times per week. And as you can see here, this is a randomized split plot design with here's our second factor is our height of cut. This is our lower height of cut. The back there is our higher height of cut and it's all randomized throughout our four replications. And so in the higher in the lower height of cut is mowed with a walk behind mower and that's at 0.4 inches and the higher height of cut is mowed with a triplex mower at one and a half inches and all plots are mowed two to three times every week. Every two weeks we collect percent volumetric water content, NDVI measurements, and turf quality ratings as well as we take light box photos that we run through turf analyzer software to give it percent turf grass cover on each of the plots. Every month, we take visual assessments of our percent annual bluegrass in each plot. And in October of each year, we take grid counts to collect the percent of annual bluegrass in each of the plots. 2019, we didn't receive a drought until about middle of August. It was at this point, we started to detect a difference in our soil moisture levels. In October of 2019, in the higher height of plots that were mowed, at the higher height of cut, and received irrigation only once a week, had about 51% annual bluegrass. While all their treatments, the higher height of cut with irrigated three times a week and the lower height of cut at both once and three times a week, had greater than 65% annual bluegrass. Unfortunately, what we found was that the annual bluegrass recovered or regrew in these areas that had been weakened. So in the future, we'd like to potentially look at something with more competitive creeping growth habit, such as creeping bank grass that has stolen, rather than the perennial ryegrass, which is a bunch type of grass. Like I mentioned earlier, in 2019, we did not receive a drought until mid-August, and we maintained good turf quality in all plots throughout the entire season. In the winter of 2019, heading into 2020, we took out this big tree here that overhanged the entire plots, and so this helped improve sunlight and help dry down these plots this year. We received a drought in June and July of 2020 and the warmest July and the warmest month in New Jersey history since they started keeping records was this July. And so as you can see here that the annual bluegrass is not happy. So this plot here is um, low height of cut that was irrigated three times a week. And as you can see, it's still not happy uh, most of the grass that is in here is perennial ryegrass. And if you move on to the lower height of cut that was applied, irrigated once a week, it's also not happy. It has a little less annual bluegrass. Um, and the ryegrass is still doing fairly well though. If you move on to the higher heights of cut, this was a, irrigated once a week. It's not happy as well. Um, and you move on to the higher height of cut that's irrigated three times a week. It looks a little happier, but overall, none of these had very good turf quality like they did last year. So I'm interested to see how these are going to recover this fall and into the next spring and see if they the annual bluegrass does grow back in these bare areas like they did last year. The key takeaway from this experiment is in 2019, we maintained good turf quality in all plots throughout the entire season. And plots that were mowed at the higher height of cut and only irrigated once a week had less annual bluegrass than all the creeks. Unfortunately, the annual bluegrass did regrow and recover 
in these areas that have been weakened. So in the future, we'd like to do, do this experiment on a more competitive grass that has better creeping uh, growth habits, such as creeping big grass.